God is dead. At least, it's what they said. Every major scholar in the world agrees a man from Nazareth walked this earth until they nailed him to a tree. Although I say they, I really mean we. We mocked and tortured him. He was nothing more than an animal we sought to put down. Some were calling him a king, so we buried thorns into his skull. Our disgust was his crown. Jesus? Blasphemer! How could he claim to forgive the destruction men caused? That he could reconcile us with the only true God? That's why we strung him up and didn't care to watch him die. See, he was already dead to us. We were all enemies, rebels from the start. Even after deliverance from Egypt, Pharaoh never left our hearts. Like scoffers rejecting the ark, or a hospital torn down by patients, the creation killing their creator was always God's plan to save us. On a hillside outside Jerusalem, Time, still, signal, drop, earth, dark, heart, stop. But what is time to one who has no beginning or end? It was his decision to step out of this world and his glory to step back in. We stripped divinity from a cross, placed his body in a cave to let the world mourn the rabbi who claimed he could save. We prepared a borrowed grave for this Jesus, Prince of Peace, unaware he had only signed for a three-day lease. Now this is where the stone trembles, when the lion's been sided long enough. This is the resurrection on record. This is definitive proof of love. This is the beginning after every ending. This is mercy. This is grace. This is Jesus has defeated death. This is why we have church on Sundays. This is forgiveness. This is select all delete on our guilt. This is are you hungry for new life? Then come and have your fill. This is a God who is faithful every minute, every hour. This is victory and triumph. This is Holy Spirit power. This is the devil's worst nightmare. The lion of the tribe of Judah. This is heaven meets earth in harmony singing glory. Hallelujah. This is for every country, every city, every culture, every tribe. This is why do you look for the living among the dead? He is risen. He's alive. There is a lion roaring. Jesus, the King of glory. Amen. Amen. He's risen. He's risen indeed. You know, if there were no resurrection, well, then we're just wasting our time, aren't we? But this is the most significant day in human history. It's the day that changed it all. It's the day that gives us hope. It's the reason why we meet together like we do on Sundays, the purpose that we carry, the passion that we can have in our hearts. Are you, get, are you excited to be in church this morning? This is Easter Sunday. Why don't you just turn to someone next to you and say, Happy Easter. Tell them that Jesus is alive. And then as you've done that, why don't you stand to your feet? It is Great to have you with us this morning. If you're here for the first time or the first time in a long time or you come all of the time, we are absolutely delighted to have you here with us this morning on this Easter Sunday. We're going to be here for around 90 minutes or so. That's the plan this morning because it's a, an extra special day, not just that it's Easter Sunday, but that we've got uh, three people being baptized a little bit later on. So we are delighted to be celebrating that with them. If you're watching online today, can we give you a really warm welcome? Please drop a comment in the chat. Anne, who is your online host, would love to be able to connect with you. But uh, we are just so pleased that you can be here with us today. The team are going to lead us in some songs of praise and worship just in a moment. The words are going to come up on the screen. If you're not used to being in church, 
Uh, so just follow along. There's going to be some great songs that you can uh, join in with us at all. But let me pray for us, and then the team are going to begin to lead us. Father, we thank you that on this Easter Sunday, we can join together and we can lift up your name in this place. Thank you for the hope that we have. And thank you, Father, that we have the opportunity to declare once again that Jesus is alive. And so help us to know the hope of Easter afresh in our hearts today and all that it brings. For we ask it in his precious name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.
today is a new day. It's all about new beginnings, isn't it? We're going to be celebrating later on some baptisms of people that have made that decision and are stepping into new life with Jesus. And we want to teach you a new song this morning. It's called I Believe by Full Wickham. Some of you may know it, some of you may not, but we'd really love for you to just listen and pick it up as we go along. It's really simple. So here we go. This is I Believe.
Okay, that was just the warm-up. Okay, we're going to sing that one again now that you've had chance to listen to it through. This is Easter Sunday. If we can't lift our voices up to Jesus today, there is something wrong with us. And so the team are going to lead us again, and let's just go all in for this one as we do it, and let's just declare the truths that we're singing in this song together. Come on, let's do this again. Oh, 
Yeah, come on, let's give the Lord a clap off. Let's just applaud him. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you for this hope, this very real hope that we have in you today. Lord, I pray for every person in this room, every person watching online or maybe watching later, that Lord God, as we just reflect on the things that we've been singing about this morning, that they wouldn't just be words on a screen or nice words to a nice tune, but for each and every one of us, this would be the truth. This would be the reality of, of, of each of our lives, God, that we would know this hope afresh within us today. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Oh, man. Oh, man. Why don't we show the band some appreciation for leading us this morning? You know, I've not been handed any prayer request cards this morning. I don't know if that's a really good thing. <laughs> I think it is. I know there's other people that we've been praying for ongoing over the uh, recent weeks and months, and so please keep some of those in your prayers. I've, I was given just one praise report, and that is that last Sunday we were praying for Jackie's mom, Lynn, who was having surgery last week, and the good news was that she's back home, surgery's gone well, so we really do want to thank God for that as well, so uh, that's really good. But listen, why don't you turn around, say hello to someone. This is what we call our minute mingle. can often get a little bit crazy, but turn around, say hello to someone. Make them feel welcome here this morning. Okay, if you just want to be looking to take your seats, that would be really helpful. As I said at the start, really is great to have you here with us this morning, and especially if you are here for the first time, our hope is that it won't be the last time. Uh, we would love to begin a conversation with you. That might be to find out more about who we are as a church. Maybe you're new to the town, and you'd love to find out a little bit more about who we are here at Lakeside, or maybe you're new to faith and you'd love to have a conversation just to explore, you're curious about faith and what it is that we believe. Again, we would love to have that conversation with you. I'm hoping that as you came in, that you might have been handed one of these blue bags if you're here for the first time. If you haven't got one, please make sure that you don't leave without grabbing one of these. Have a chat with myself or one of the team in the blue t-shirts. They would happily hand you one of these because there's some details in there about who we are, but the best way to let us know that you're new here is either by filling in this blue card that you'll find in that bag, or the other way that you can do it is if you've got a tablet or a smartphone with you, open up the camera app, scan that QR code that's on the seat back in front of you, and that'll bring you through to a page on our website where you can tick that, that box at the top, it says I'm new here, put in your details, that'll come through to us, and then we can get in touch with you. First of all, we'd love to write out and just say thank you so much for being here with us on this Easter Sunday, but maybe you'd love to explore things a little bit more, find out more, and so that enables us to make contact with you to have that conversation. Whilst you're on there as well, the best way to stay up to speed with everything that's taking place in the life of the church is just by ticking that box at the bottom that says, I'd love to receive your weekly email, because Lakeside is so much more than what takes place on a Sunday. It's great that we can be together, and it's great to see so many of us, this place absolutely full this morning. But there's so many other things taking place through the week, and we'd love to have uh, to, or to be able to let you know what's taking place. And so uh, the best way to do that is to get that weekly email, which will keep you up to speed 
Just a couple of things I want to share with you before I invite a few people up to come and join me. And that is, first of all, to say that we had an amazing time yesterday at our Easter extravaganza event. We reckon there were probably somewhere between five to 600 people here throughout those few hours that we had. And uh, wasn't the weather great for us? God was kind to us after the weather we've had over the past few days. It was lovely to have some lovely uh, sunshine just like it is. But can we just say a massive thank you? If you were involved in serving in some way yesterday, would you just stand up for us? Come on, don't be shy. If you were involved, I know there were others as well, but can we give them a huge round of applause? Such a great, such a great event. Thank you to all of you. You know, we're so reliant upon you to help make things happen here at Lakeside. And you guys just massively excelled yesterday. It was so, so good. So thank you for that. And then just the other thing I want to share with you is that next Sunday, we're going to be starting a brand new series that we're going to be running throughout April. So I just want to encourage you with this. It's called, who are you going to call? You know, how many of you know, don't say it. <laughs> How many of you know life is full of ups and downs? Has anyone discovered that? If we've been, had breath in our lungs for any length of time, we'll know that, that life isn't always plain sailing, is it? And when those difficulties come, when those trials, those, those, those more challenging times come, who are you going to call? Who is it you're going to turn to? S someone said it, it. You can try calling Ghostbusters, but let me tell you, they're not really going to help you but there is the new film that's just come out I think uh, last week or the week before so we're just picking up on that on that theme as well who are you going to call so that's what we're going to be exploring over uh, the following four weeks so we really want to encourage you to come along and uh, be part of that with us it's going to be really encouraging it's going to be practical uh, I really want to encourage you to think about inviting a friend to come along as well so they can hear that and the uh, different things that we're going to be sharing. A couple of other things. First of all, we're going to take our offering right up at the end. This is something that we do every week. Part of our worship, the way that we worship God is through the giving of a percentage of our income. So there's different ways that can happen. You can give digitally. There's some details on the screen. Or we're going to pass the offering containers around right at the very end as we sing that final song. If you're a guest here today, please feel free to let these pass before you. This is for those who are called Lakeside, their home. If you want to give to that, that's, that's absolutely great. But everything that comes in helps us in our mission and the ministry of helping other people find and follow Jesus for themselves. And so thank you for your faithfulness and your generosity with that. And then just to say, you might be wondering why I've got this egg up here. Uh, it's just to remind all the kids or the parents to make sure that your kids have got one. We've got one of these for every child here today. Now, when I say child, I'm starting off by meaning little children. <laughs> I know we've got a lot of big kids in here as well, but when, once the kids have got theirs, if there's any spare ones going, it's just first come, first served. Okay, I'll let you fight that out amongst yourselves. But parents or grandparents, carers, if you've got a child here with you this morning and they're involved in our kids program, make sure that they get one of those before they leave. We'd love to, to bless them with them. Let me invite a few people to come and join me. So uh, Maxim and uh, Rebecca and Nathan, just come and join me up on the platform if you would. So we were meeting together on uh, Thursday night. We just went through some of the practicalities about this morning and everything we, we, we've been through. So like, we, don't, we don't get the full testimonies from everyone because we could be here forever as we go through that. But we've been chatting through, just hearing some of the different journeys that they've been on uh, that have brought them to this place because a little bit later on, we're going to baptize them, which is really just an outward sign of an inward change that Jesus at various, at, at, at each point in their lives has has come into their hearts and he's made a difference and uh, they just want to go public with that to declare that they belong to Jesus. We were having this little uh, uh, discussion on Thursday night. Nathan said, how long do you keep us under? <laughs> so I said to him, well, it all depends how good you've been this past week, Nathan. <laughs> if you've been really good this week, you'll be straight down and straight back up. If you've been naughty, we'll give you a little time to think about your behavior. <laughs> before we bring you back up again. But uh, 
We're absolutely delighted that we're able to baptize Nathan and Maxim and, and Rebecca. But we've invited them up there, first of all, so that you can see who they are, who are going to be uh, getting baptized a little bit later on. But we'd love to hear just something from them as to why they want to do that. Why do you want to be baptized this morning, Rebecca? Well, I need Jesus in my life, I realize, and I want to follow him. Brilliant. Fantastic. So good, isn't it? So good. And I know something of the story, was it a year ago, wasn't it, on Easter Sunday when you came here for the first time? Yeah, so I came here a year ago today with my daughter, and that was the first time I brought Jesus into my life, and really only just realized that really recently, having done the Alpha course, and come here every Sunday, and it's been amazing. It's been an amazing journey, personally. So, ah, so good, so good to hear. Thanks so much, Rebecca. Maxim, yeah. Maxim, just tell us why you want to be baptised this morning. Because um, I love Jesus, Jesus loves me, and, you know, it's a long time coming. So, yeah, it's great, you know. I've been a Christian basically my whole life, um, and, uh, yeah, it means so much. Especially Easter Sunday as well, which is the most important day for us. So, it's a true blessing, and to move on next to what I've got in my life, it is, uh, it's great. So, yeah. Do you want to share just what it is that you're going to be doing? Yeah, of course, yeah. So next month I go away and start Royal Marines training. So that's going to be, it's going to be very hard. Um, so I need God with me for that. But yeah, it's going to be a true blessing. He's going to move in me um, for that. And yeah, it's, um, it's just perfect. Perfect timing to get baptized. Perfect everything. It means so much. And thank you for everyone here supporting the baptisms. And uh, yeah, can't wait to get it done now. Can't wait to <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep you waiting just a little bit longer. But thanks so much, Maxim. And then, Nathan, Nathan, just tell us why you want to be baptised this morning. Well, I want to be a follower of Jesus, and I've lo loved Jesus with my heart. Oh, so good, isn't it? Isn't it great to, to hear that? Well, we're absolutely delighted that we're going to be able to do that with you all later. Let's give them another little round of applause. They can go and take their seats. And I'm going to invite Pastor John to come and uh, bring us the message this morning. So why don't we just pray as we uh, just prepare our hearts, ready to, to hear all that John has prepared for us. Father, we thank you that, that we can be here together. And uh, Lord, we thank you that your word is truth and your word is life. We really believe that. And we're asking that as, we, as we're here now, what, what, what John has to share with us, that Father, you would not only uh, just help him, as he brings that to us, but speak to each of our hearts here today, we pray, and uh, help us not just be hearers, but help us uh, apply what we're going to hear to our lives, so that we can live this out. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's welcome Pastor John. If you come. When Tracy and I first met as teenagers, the, on our first date, uh, the first film I ever took her to was Escape from Alcatraz with Clint Eastwood at the Fleetwood Regent. I knew how to give a girl a good time. Um, escapes have featured in titles of films uh, through the years. Uh, some of you might remember The Great Escape, which was a World War II film in, from 1963 started, starring Steve McQueen. And then in... Um, 2023, more recently, there was a film called The Great Escaper, and that starred Michael Caine and Glenda Jackson, and it uh, told the story of a 89-year-old World War uh, II veteran who escaped from his nursing home, and he uh, went to the 70th D-Day commemorations in France. And it was actually the last film in which uh, Michael Caine and Glenda Jackson starred those British acting greats. Well, the title of my talk this morning is not The uh, Great Escape, nor The Great Escaper, but it, rather it's The Greatest Escape. The Greatest Escape. I uh, worked in prisons for 30 years, over 30 years, and we never celebrated escapes. <laughs> the job of prisons is, is first and foremost to keep people in. Uh, fortunately, over the years, less and less have occurred, but one escape was always 
one too many. Um, well, anyway, I've heard that the police have said that a five foot two fortune teller has got away. They're reporting a small medium at large. <laughs> There's a serious point there, never consult mediums or fortune tellers. They're tapping into the right source. That may be for somebody this morning. But this morning, we're celebrating the greatest escape. The greatest escape. It was the greatest escape of all. On Resurrection Sunday, we're celebrating the one who escaped from the tomb. The most dramatic getaway that's ever occurred. That would bring uh, hope to the world and mankind. And that includes you and me. Is that good or is that good? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These days, there's entertainment from escaping. You might have been to escape rooms where people um, actually go and, and, and have fun uh, trying to find ways to uh, get out. I heard someone went to the worst escape room ever. They said it's called Ikea. <laughs> well, it's great to have fun at the time uh, we celebrate and to eat chocolate and to have egg hunts and spend time with family, with the ones uh, we love. But this is a really important time when we celebrate the greatest escape to reflect on, to rejoice in, and to respond to. God is so good. The greatest escape, the Christian message is all about a man called Jesus who lived 2,000 years ago. He went around uh, see, um, speaking good news and seeing miracles wherever he went. He was not just a man, he was the son of God. And on Good Friday, we remembered his death on a cross. We remembered what he did. The, the locals and the religious leaders wanted to see him crucified, wanted to see him killed. And we shouldn't be surprised at that. The prophets of old had spoken about it long ago, that he would be the one who would suffer. He would suffer for everything and everyone ever got wrong. The Bible calls it sin. But then he went to the grave. But then if we read on in, in the biblical account, that wasn't the end. And we're going to read about that right now from Matthew chapter 28. Starting to read at verse 1. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead, and he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers, go to Galilee. There they will see me. On Friday, we remembered to, um, Jesus going to the cross. The cross, that place of, of mercy and salvation. And now the empty tomb on Easter Sunday, the evidence of the resurrection, the greatest escape of all. The tomb, that place of doom and gloom, became the grave that saves. Romans 10 and verse 9, if we declare with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. We will be saved. Escapers often have an accomplice. Um, the old war films had uh, decoys and lookouts, if you remember. In the criminal world, the getaway driver often features in escapes um, or even in the original committing of the crime. Early in my um, work in prisons, I met somebody who was responsible for the getaway from a robbery. And I re uh, uh, realized back then that not all crime is sophisticated. I asked him how he got caught, and he, he replied, at the bus stop. <laughs> but in the, 
Easter account in Matthew 29, 28, sorry, an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled away the stone and sat on it. Ephesians 1 tells us that God raised Jesus from the dead. But if we re read in the Easter uh, uh, and Christmas accounts, we see at various times in God's plans, angels get, get involved. Uh, if we read in the book of Acts, in the escape of Peter from prison, an angel was involved, him leading him out of the prison that day. And angels are still involved today. Hebrews 1 verse 14 are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? And that includes you and me. How good is that? There's more going on for us than sometimes we realize. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? The greatest escape. I've got three phrases all beginning with E to help us reflect on this Easter. The first is, it was the event of all events. Events are important in our lives. Some of you may be fans of Call the Midwife on the telly, um, set in the 1960s, and a recent episode saw all the cast in different places sat watching the Man on the Moon in 1969. They were all watching it on black and white TVs. Some events we remember are for exciting reasons and some more sad ones. Two of the tragic ones I recall where I was were the, uh, when the Twin Towers fell at 9-11, and also that moment uh, when we heard that Princess Diana uh, had sadly been killed in a, a motor accident. Sometimes there are those tragic ones which, which particularly stick in our minds. But other events we remember are for more po positive reasons. Maybe for some in here you remember England winning the World Cup in 1966. And then for others, maybe 2003 when Johnny Wilson kicked that a dramatic last-minute drop goal that went over and England won the Rugby World Cup. Well, sadly, not all teams uh, win very often. Uh, San Marino, the world's uh, fifth smallest country, landlocked by Italy, Tracy and I have been there once, uh, has a football team whose record goal scorer has just eight goals. And they last won a game which was a friendly against Liechtenstein in 2004. They are the world's worst team, according to FIFA. So all you fans who support dodgy teams, there's hope yet. <laughs> in working in prisons, I can certainly re remember the small number of escapes that occurred in prisons I was associated with. More uh, memories with beads of sweat on my brow, if I have to say. But our title today is The Greatest Escape, and it was the greatest and most special event ever. Now, the hottest tickets in town today might be in boxing the Fury versus Usyk fight, or maybe Taylor Swift, or maybe the Rolling Stones, who actually got together in 1962 and are somehow still touring. Um, but let me tell you uh, that the most special event ever was the original Rolling Stone. The original Rolling Stone. It was bigger than them all. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 3. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. Now my contention today is that this message of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the most important message you can ever hear. Death was the de defeated, and it is the greatest escape of all. The greatest escape of all. Romans 6, verse 9. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. Let me say this morning that Jesus is alive. Amen. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He died to sin once for all. And because of that, everything I, we, us, everyone ever got wrong was dealt with once and for all. And because he was raised from the dead, the greatest escape of all, death has been defeated. I love that phrase, death no longer has mastery over him. Death no longer has mastery over him. He was risen 
from the dead. John 3.16, probably the most quoted Bible verse of all time, says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Those who believe um, in Jesus, who believe in his resurrection, when they depart from this life, will live forever in heaven. It's going to be fantastic. Let me say that the greatest escape gives us the greatest future. The greatest future. On Escape to the Country on the TV, some of you may watch that. Those who take part are shown homes to live in in idyllic locations. And a number of them uh, will move from city life ultimately to follow their rural dream. But any move we make in this life is only ever temporary. But the wonderful thing when we believe in Jesus, when we believe in the resurrection, when we receive that resurrection life in us, the eternal life that we're going to have will go on forever and ever and ever. It will be a place where there will be no sickness, no sadness, no dying, no mourning. It's going to be the most wonderful place. And that's our destiny when we believe in Jesus. Not temporary, but permanent. He is so good. Number two. Resurrection Sunday, the experience of all experiences. People today are often buying ex, uh, um, experience days as gifts. They can include zip wire, they can include uh, go ape adventures, paintballing, uh, skydiving, um, and also escape rooms. It's just making me tired just reading out that list to you. Um, but they can also include afternoon tea. And uh, there's... <laughs> Some may prefer that. I can see a few nods around. But let me say that Easter is something to be experienced and not just celebrated. Philippians 3 verse 10. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I'm going to read that again. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. When we receive Christ, his resurrection power is at work in our lives. It's at work in our lives. And uh, it's sometimes, it's something to be experienced, and there's nothing like it. Nothing. Power to save, power to change, power to heal, power to transform, power to strengthen, power to raise up. Power to set us free. Paul wrote to the Galatians in chapter 5 and verse 1. It was for freedom that Christ has set us free. Let us, on the, as we celebrate this great escape of all at this time of Easter, let us be those who escape hopelessness and heaviness and step into fearlessness and, and freedom and a faith-filled future that we have in Christ. God is so good. This Easter, through the power of the resurrection, rected Christ, let's let that um, experience of his power just be manifest in us. Our strap line as a church is leading others into life. To do that more and more, let's allow his resurrection power to be at work in us, constantly experiencing that resurrection power. Because when we're full, full, full of the life of God, we've got the life of God to share with others, and we can help lead others into life. Easter can be a great time to resurrect plans and passion for God we thought had become dormant. In between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, there was Holy Saturday. It was a time of silence. It was a time uh, of anxiety and despair for the early disciples. They thought all their dreams had been dashed. They thought all that their hope had come to nothing. Sometimes we can be in that place. Sometimes we can be in that place where we've had knocks in life. We can be in that place where areas we'd hoped to sp step into have not come about. Maybe we'd hoped to be in the center of church and serving the Lord, and somehow that's not happened for us. We've stayed on the edge, and we're frustrated. Maybe words from God have come to us, and we've not stepped into them as we were prompted to, and it's just left us in frustration. Maybe in our prayer life, it's become more dim and distant, and reading the Word of God and reaching out to others is not what it once was. Well, let me say, after 
Holy Saturday came Easter Sunday. <laughs> Unlike milk in the fridge, which has, has an expiration date, God's plans never go out of date. Sure, they may modify a bit through time, but maybe this Easter, maybe it's a time to resurrect your hopes and dreams. Maybe to remember the things that God has said to you. Maybe to remember that passion with which you've once held uh, Jesus and, and your walk with the Lord. And maybe it's time to resurrect them again. Maybe it's time to fan them into flame and, and step into all that God has got for you. The best is yet to come. It's important to note that the Bible focuses on God, but also acknowledges the work of the devil who is trying to undermine all that God wants to do. 1 John 3 verse 8, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. I read that the devil doesn't mind you speaking words of faith as long as you don't take steps of faith. Maybe it's a time to take new risks. Easter's a great time to do that. There's a quote from T.S. Eliot, only those who risk going too far can possibly find how far they can go. As a church, we've had recent words about breakthrough, and at the same time, we're taking steps to progress. It's exciting. Let me say that the greatest escape of all means as, an individu as individuals and together, we can escape the mundane and move into the miraculous. Number three, and finally... Resurrection Stunt Sunday, the extravaganza of all extravaganzas. We had our extravaganza event yesterday, Richard mentioned it. But an extravaganza is described as a large and exciting event, and they don't get bigger than the greatest escape on Easter Sunday. Jesus rose from the dead, death was defeated, and it would affect the world like nothing else has. The greatest escape, this extravaganza of extravaganzas, was only possible because of the extravagant love of God. I love how the message articulates the grace we often refer to. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14. The amazing grace of the Master, Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with all, all of you. Isn't that beautiful? God's love is extravagant. There is no one and nowhere it can't reach. Rick Warren said that God's love is like an ocean. You can see its beginning, but not its end. This morning, I want to say to each and every person here that God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He sent Jesus to die on a cross for you. On Easter Sunday, he was risen from the dead, that you can um, have hope in this life but you can have eternal life with him in heaven forever. There is nobody beyond the extent of God's love. He's the one who accepts you when all else has rejected you. He's the one who forgives you when everyone else has judged you. He is the one who has mercy when everyone else has condemned you. His name is Jesus, and his love is pouring out here in this place and extending to every person in this room today. His love is just flowing out for you. It, it is such an extravagant love. You might not have encountered it before. You might be in this room and you're just sensing uh, there's, there's something going on. Let me tell you, it's not something, it's somebody. And his name is Jesus. And he's extending his arms of love out to you. Right across from this room in this place. You might not have been to anything like this before. But let me say, as you come in here today and you meet God's people, you will encounter the loving love of God. It is so wonderful. The band come back, please. There are people going to get baptized today, going under the water, symbolizing dying to, um, dying to their self and their old life. And you will come back up, back up again, we promise, demonstrating the wonderful life that you have in Jesus. Like Easter, it's about escaping death and rising up to new life. But first, I want to give everyone here an opportunity to come to Jesus. We quoted Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, which says that if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord 
and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There may be people here on, and you're on a journey and want to find out more, and that's fine. But if you're sensing in your heart that this is your, the day to, for you to make your faith sure, then I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray. And to pray a prayer of receiving salvation in Jesus Christ. If everybody would bow your heads and if you want to pray this for the first time, you're saying yes to Jesus, you're saying yes to receiving salvation in Jesus Christ, then pray this along with me. Every head's bowed. Lord, I come to you. I thank you, Jesus, that you died for me and rose again. Lord, forgive me for everything I ever got wrong. I turn away from my sin and I turn to follow you. I believe in you and receive you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. As all heads are bowed, I just want to ask, is there anybody here and you've prayed that for the first time? And you want to say yes to Jesus this morning, what better time to do it than Easter Sunday? You're saying, I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. If that's you, would you do something for me? Would you uh, just uh, put your hand up? And as you do it, I will acknowledge that and then I'll ask you to put it down. Is there anybody in the room today and you've prayed that prayer for the very first time? You want to acknowledge Jesus as your Lord and Saviour? Thank you. Thank you. Put your hand back down. Thank you. Is there anybody else here today? Thank you. See that? See your hand. Thank you. If you put that back down. If there's anybody online, if you'd like to put an emoji in the chat... Um, and uh, that will let our online host know I'm just seeing that another hand over there in the middle thank you so much thank you so much some of our team will, will give you some uh, material to help you on your journey that's wonderful isn't it and uh, if you just come back together please uh, there were three people this morning who just indicated they'd like to follow Christ let's give them a round of applause ask everybody to stand please if you're able I just want to finish by praying for resurrection power for each of us this morning um, Philippines 3 verse 10 we, we looked at I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead as I was praying about this morning I had this phrase power surge come into my head and I, I thought power surge that often leads to trip outs and blowouts and difficult things but I sensed in my spirit that power surge today means something really, really positive. And that as we pray uh, this Easter, this Easter day, that as we pray for his resurrection power to be manifest in this place, that some of you are going to get a power surge that is going to step you forward into a new way of living for Jesus. So we're going to pray. We're going to reach out to God. You might want to reach out, hold your hands if you feel comfortable with that. There's no pressure. But if you feel comfortable with that, I'm going to invite the resurrection power of Jesus Christ to be manifest in this place today. So Lord, we thank you for Resurrection Sunday. We thank you that Jesus is alive. And we thank you for the resurrection power which can work in our lives and worked in our lives the first time we came to you. But today we come to you again and we ask you for fresh resurrection power today. I ask you for that power surge in this place. I ask you to... to, to moving people's lives today in a really significant, mighty way that, Lord, they'll step forward this Easter Sunday full of the life of God, full of the vitality that comes through Christ, full of the Spirit of the living God living in them. Spirit of God, just move amongst your people today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's show our appreciation to John for sharing that with us. Only someone who's had years and years of experience in the prison service can talk about escapes with that kind of uh, uh, clarity and that. John, thank you so much. And if you're one of those people that responded, one of the team has got a, a little gift for you that we'd love to have put in your hand before you go that will just help you take some next steps. So uh, make sure that you, again, like you don't go without that. Listen, let me tell you what's going to happen. We're going to sing a song. We're going to take up our offering as I mentioned before, so this is an opportunity for those of us particularly who 
call Lakeside our home for us to give towards that. This just helps us to, to reach out into our town to help people come to, to, to know and discover Jesus for themselves. So please, if you're a guest here today, feel free to let those containers go before you. If you want to give, that, that's absolutely great. We're not going to stop you, and that will be used in such a positive and a significant way. But uh, then once we've done this, we're going to uh, just take our seats again. The kids are going to come and join us at the back. I think they're going to be in there. So uh, parents, just be mindful that we'll take the children back out into their room at the end of the corridor as you walk out. And so you can pick your child up from there afterwards. And uh, then we're just going to baptize each of them, Maxim, Rebecca, and then Nathan together. So let's sing this song together. And then uh, we can take our seats again as we get ready to, to baptize them.
please, please take your seats. Let me explain what's going to happen. So uh, we're going to invite each of them up one by one. They'll get into the baptistry. And uh, then we've got a verse, just been going through the scriptures, just asking God to give them a, a particular verse from, from scripture or a couple of verses that will be what we call their, their baptismal promise, a verse that they can carry with them throughout their life. So we'll read that to them. And then one of the, those who are baptizing them will pray for them. And then they'll uh, just go ahead then and, and baptize them. So uh, Maxim's up first. So let's give Maxim another little <laughs> ripple of applause. What's lovely as well for Maxim is that he's got his dad, Ron, who's baptizing him. <laughs> he's the shy one. <laughs> and also uh, another Ron, who was Maxim's pastor for years and years, uh, Ron Farrington. So Maxim's getting baptized by the two Ronnies this morning. So <laughs> it's good night from me and it's good night from him. So guys, in you get, you get on in there. That's it, yeah. So we've. Uh, so, can we bring up the, the baptismal verse for, for Maxim? So, Maxim, this is your baptismal verse, Deuteronomy 31 and verse 6. So, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them, for the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Come on, let me pray. Lord, we pray for Max. We pray that as he go into Marines, Lord, we pray your strength, your humility, your guiding hand, but most of all, your Holy Spirit, just to come upon him right now from the tip of his head to the sole of his feet. Lord, I pray for this appointed time, Lord, that, you may know, that he may know you in every single matter of his life, that the past is forgiven, that he gets baptized this morning, we lay the past and we break every chain from the past completely as he goes into the water. And as he rise, we, we pray that he'll arise a, a new man. Lord, he may rise bold with that authority that only comes from you. And Lord, I pray that your anointing will always be with him. Right. And wherever he goes and whatever situation he is, we just pray that your anointing will always go with him. I pray that he'll always have that passion for Jesus, a love for you more than anything else. And Lord, that his colleagues will see and want to be like him. Touch his life right now this morning and bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sam, I'm so proud. Thank you, man. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? And do you want to be baptized? I do. Okay. On confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, Max, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Come on. How good is that? I'm sure his dad was trying to hold him down a little bit longer there, you know. I'm, I am convinced of that. Wonderful. Rebecca. Let's give Rebecca some encouragement. Paul and John are going to come and... So, Rebecca, this is your, your baptismal verse. So, Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you which path to take.
Yeah, God, we just thank you for Rebecca. We thank you for the journey that you've taken her on over this past year. And we thank you that you've walked beside her every single step, that you've continued to reveal your love and your hope for her. And God, we just pray that as she makes this next step of her faith today, that you would be with her, that you'd be present as she comes out of this water. She'll know afresh how much you love her today. And God, we just pray as this is the next step of a whole new chapter that you have for her, that she'll be able to reveal your love to other people around. And we just pray that, Holy Spirit, that you would bless her, that you would fill her again today. Amen. Amen. Rebecca, do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength? And are you prepared to follow him all the days of your life? Then on confession of your faith, Rebecca, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well done, Rebecca. Excellent. Nathan, let's give Nathan a little bit of encouragement. Nathan's uncle Dave, he's getting in as well. Let's give Dave a little bit of encouragement. <laughs> In fact, Nathan, your baptismal verse. I'm getting ahead of myself there. And so Joshua 1. And verse 9, Nathan, this is my command, the Lord says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Yeah, we just declare that promise over you, Nathan, that to be strong and courageous. We just pray, Lord, that you would give Nathan a courageous spirit, a boldness, that, a boldness that means that when he's in school, whether he's with his friends, that he would be a shining light for you, that he would be able to show your love and your power and demonstrate it amongst all his friends. We just pray, Lord, that he would be able to be someone who stands up for you no matter what the situation. Holy Spirit, we just pray that you would fill him again this morning. Amen. Nathan, do you love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? Yes, I do. Are you prepared to follow him for the rest of your days? Yes. All right, Nathan. Well, on confession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Anyone else? <laughs> hey, that is so, so good. So, so good. Maybe you're here this morning, you're a, you're a follower of Jesus, and you've not yet been through the waters of baptism. There's some forms, some little pamphlets on the unit just by the, uh, the entrance there or in reception. You know, we will get the baptistry set up whenever we've got someone that is ready to be baptized. And so, like, we try and plan a, f a few through the year but we don't want to wait until those dates if you know that you've not yet been baptized and you'd love to to, to do that which is such an important next step come and talk to us because we will happily get that filled up so that we can celebrate that just at any point through the year so uh, we're going to let the children go just go back to their their room there so parents carers if you've got one there please remember to pick them up number one before you go and uh, make sure that they've got their egg as well. There are teas and coffees that are being served upstairs. Got a lovely coffee house overlooking the lake if you've not been here before. So please come and join with us. It's all free up there as well. So go over there, just follow the crowd, join the queue and uh, grab yourself a tea or coffee and some biscuits up there as well. And uh, have a wonderful rest of the Easter Sunday and enjoy your bank holiday tomorrow. And uh, don't forget, next Sunday, we're kicking off that new series. Who are you going to call? <laughs> oh, you are miserable. <laughs> we'll just give the kids a moment to go back. And uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. If you're new and you've filled in one of those cards, make sure you hand it to us. And if it's your first time, make sure you get one of those blue bags as well. We'd love to 
bless you with one of those. God bless you. And just be mindful, it is a little bit slippy just out here, so just be careful as you're making your way past the baptistry.